Hi guys, today I'm going to take you on a little journey through my experiences of uh, incense as, a, as a, a fragrance note. And I just started to discover this note like about, was it like six or nine months ago? I was a little bit hesitant at first. I didn't think it was my thing. Uh, but then I've been hanging out with a, this um, one of my best uh, perfume buddies and she's so much into incense. She even gets like cravings for it. Uh, it's it's her absolute favorite fragrance note and she's got like some 30 plus bottle full bottles of perfume uh, with this note and uh, she had them all kind of arranged by category within the incense category and kind of took me on a guided tour through all these like her floral incenses and fig incense and churchy incenses and amber incenses and, and um, after that I found some that I really liked and I found some that where I'm, I was a little bit on the fence and then I found I mean I, I experienced uh, fragrances that I would never wear and I still to this day really dislike because I've tried them again um, and so um, now I have I've been acquiring some of my own I'm going to show them to you of some I'm only at the decant level and I might go full bottle maybe not um, there's there's like one that I think projects too poorly. I like to share that too. I think it's important that a fragrance channel also you know brings up um, the not so good things and not just you know this one's this one's fantastic or this one's gorgeous and this one's stunning, uh, but also the ones that where I think it's wise maybe not to spend your money. And then I'm going to tell you the ones that I really really dislike still, but. I'll never say never again when it comes to fragrance. I know that at one point I might actually appreciate these fragrances. Okay, so where to start? Uh, the ones that I've actually purchased, or the first thing I did after I, you know, Clara, my friend, took me through this fragrance tour, I went home and I looked through my collection and I, I pulled out the ones I already had that featured the note of incense and just to, just to kind of, you know, identify this note. And the first thing, the first one that I found was Precious Oud from Van Cleef and Arpel, which I would not describe as an incense-y um, perfume, but balsamic, like, so like floral balsamic. There's absolutely no oud in here to my nose, but it's, um, those of you who are familiar with Black Orchid from Tom Ford, this one smells very close to the, the long dry down of that one, but I really can't stand the opening of a Black Orchid. It's too heavy, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> this one goes straight to the, the best of that. Um, it's a real easy wear. There's nothing here that disturbs the nose. It's just all so well blended, very soft corners. It's, it's, um, there's a hint of sweetness, but it's more about, it's really hard to describe this fragrance, but there's incense in there. And another one that I had um, is an old designer, uh, Flower by Kenzo. Uh, this is the EDP version. They're like a thousand flankers. I've only tried this one. And this one has rose, uh, violet, uh, bourbon vanilla, musk, and incense. And it's quite heavy on the incense when you really pay attention. And it does also remind me of something that Clara showed me. Uh, and this is like my, I think my second decant of, um, it's called Sideris from Maria, uh, Maria Candida Gentil, a French house. This is a beautiful uh, incense fragrance that really reminds me of Flower by Kenzo. And if I had to say that one of these were niche, um, without knowing the, the brand, I would have said the Kenzo. Uh, this is such a great um, price-worthy fragrance. If you're on a budget, I, find, I see these on, on, not on sale, but I see them um, uh, secondhand. Like on our version of eBay, I can, you can see these like all the time. Um, so I think that they get passed around a lot. It's this a really good projection, really good longevity. I just think it is a stunning fragrance. When I run out, I just actually bought this. It kind of came in this package deal. I bought from someone in my community, a whole bunch of decants and samples. And then this one was included with about this much. And I've been through like half of it already. Um, so, such a good fragrance. But I also love uh, Sideris. It's great. Um, it has some floral notes, but no, no, um, they're not listed. Uh, in the fragrance, although it's so close to this can flower by Kenzo. Okay, so what else did I have I purchased? I purchased this one, Caftan from YSL, which is, this is a great, um, seductive, sweet, uh, not, not overly sweet, but um, I'd say it's kind of a classic amber fragrance, but with the add-on of kind of a heavy incense note. 
Um, it's, it's, it's really, really nice. It's super potent and loud though. It's a, it's a fragrance that I don't, I can't wear it too often because it's just so loud. I, I could never wear this in the summer because this is a only winter, winter fragrance, I would say. But this is like you'd wear it maybe in front of the fireplace or for a going out night. Uh, but it has to be like, it takes energy to wear this. Like you can't just, this is not refreshing in any way. This is just like, it's heavy. It's evening, evening wear or like to maybe go out in cold weather perhaps. Uh, but it's a great, great fragrance. I love it. Um, that one leans a little feminine, I think, maybe. And this one a little more masculine. This is Sable Nuit from Armani Privé, uh, Armani's uh, private line or exclusive line. I mean, this is more heavy on the incense. I think it has like a, a olibanum in the top and the base. And there it has patchouli, labdanum. It's more like heavier base notes, I think. This one is more vanillic, and this one is a little bit more about the incense. This one used to be called, I think, Fabel Fumé or Fum. Uh, so I think they just actually changed the name, but it's, I think it's the same fragrance. Um, I'm not, I haven't bought a full bottle of this. I bought one with about this much left in it. Um, and I think maybe it's a fragrance too many because I think I prefer the caftan to this one, but they're sort of in the same kind of category. Uh, anyway, the next one is, which this is a completely different category of incense. It's called uh, Pura Lux. It's from Chapel, uh, Chapel Factory. Chapel Factory is all about incense. It has, this line uh, has five fragrances, and I think they're all on the lighter side. I would have said that this is, is like, it kind of behaves like an EDT. It's really, really light, it's really fresh. It has ambroxan and black pepper, uh, a little hint of patchouli. It has, it, this is like, um, incense is often combined with black pepper for some reason. I'm not quite sure why they go hand in hand, but they often do. And I've also found that like, in several of these fragrances that I'm talking about today, uh, pink pepper and incense are paired together as well. This is a great fragrance. I mean, this is morning morning time. It, it has great longevity like on my bathrobe, like or on clothes, not as much on skin, but I don't care so much. After two hours, I'm ready to put something else on. It's also a great scent for layering if you just wanna like give something a lift. Perhaps I could put, a, I could mix these two together because this is so darn heavy and then I would just, you know, lift it up a little bit with this one, perhaps. Great fragrance. I, I just got this. Um, and I'm really excited to wear more of it because it's it's wonderful fragrance. But my most recent purchase in the, sorry, I'm blocking the view here, uh, in the incense field is this Jose Gor from A Lab on Fire. And this is, this contains some ingredient that will be from March 1st, that's on Tuesday next week, will be forbidden in the European Union. So I, I got a hold of, bo of a bottle at the last minute. Um, and of course, I don't want to wear things that might be dangerous to me, but I mean, I wear my fragrances like once a month because I have so many, so I'm not so worried. You know, I, um, I'm sure that they have all kinds of other things that are not that great either for the skin, but this fragrance is, this is a unique fragrance and it has a lot more going on in here than incense, but it's incense combined with, combined with like aquatic marine notes like sea salt and uh, sea notes and uh, woodsy notes. Um, it also has a few like aromatic, it has juniper berry, it has uh, clary sage, ambergris, I think it has in it too. Maybe some vetiver and musk as well. It's a really uplifting and refreshing fragrance. Maybe not quite as light and refreshing as this one. So I wouldn't call it a classic freshy, um, but it is just beautiful. Um, oh, I'm so, I've only worn it like a, a time or two. I just got it like two days ago. So. Jose Gor. Um, and then I have some more fragrances here where I'm just kind of at the decant level. And I'll tell you about two here that I'm not gonna keep. Or I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna um, go full bottle. And one of them is Passage d'Enfer from L'Artisan Parfumeur. And it has, it has um, lily and musk with incense and it's very beautiful. I'm gonna spray it right now just to kind of remind myself. Um, it's a beautiful scent. But the longevity sucks, and so does the projection. It's really, really weak, uh, and I'm not really into skin scents if they're not. 
I mean, they've got to be something incredibly unique or outstanding for me to buy a skin scent, go full bottle. It's just, I think there might be some powdery notes in there, but it's just so weak on my skin. I don't know. I, I, so I'm not happy with that one. Um, and then there's one from Serge Lutens. It's called Fille en Aguille. I think it means girl on like high heels perhaps or on needle. I, I'm not quite sure of, of, of the meaning of, of this name, but it, this is um, kind of a foresty kind of fragrance. It has incense, it has pine, but it also has some, some notes that I don't like so much. And I think it's about like the dried fruit. And I've never really been into dried fruit and perfume. It gives a little bit of, it has like, pine, it's like pine combined with very sweet notes from, from like really ripe or dried fruit. I'm just not so into that. There's a spiciness to it, a little incense. I mean, I'll probably wear the rest, but I don't reach for this. Um, I don't love this. So, I mean, no, I wouldn't do that. But one that I do love, or two, uh, these, these are the two last ones I'm gonna mention that I have de at least decants of. And one is called Amberleavable by Astrophil and Stella, which is kind of a small perfume house. And it, um, it's, an, it's a great like amber fragrance, but with a heavy add-on of a poponax, which is another word for incense, basically. Um, so beautiful. Uh, it has, it has so many facets to it. Uh, I haven't worn it that much yet, but I really, really love it. I sprayed it on earlier, so I think I have pretty much of it on already. It's, it, it has great depth. It has vanillic tones. It has, um, and it just, it, it blends so well with this um, Poponax. And I, I just, I think it's a great scent. I mean, this, I might go full bottle. I'm not quite sure of the price, but I think it was quite um, affordable, if I remember correctly. And then the last one that I have here um, that I own is Ashoka. This is my second decant. Um, I would have had a full bottle by now, but it's really pricey. I think like a full bottle is like 300 bucks or something like that. Um, 300 euros, roughly. Um, and it's from the house of Nila Vermeer Creations. And this is, this is like a fig, a figgy incense fragrance. There's, it has the note of um, fig leaves and fig milk. Um, it also has myrrh, it has, of course, incense, and also, I think, ambergris, and it, ha it just has so, so many different um, things to discover. So I'll never get, I mean, I'm not a big fig fan, but I think in this one, it, it's just, the figs all wrapped up in other interesting things going on. It has lotus, it has several floral notes, it's floral, definitely. I, I love it, Ashoka, really, really recommend it. And I'll tell you the ones that I didn't like, that I don't like at all, uh, that I went through this day with my friend Clara. And one of them is her, one of her absolute favorites. It's called Relique d'Amour. And it's from the house of Orisa L. Legrand um, from France. And it is kind of a churchy, imagine like a, a wet stone, kind of a churchy kind of stone um, with, with moss growing on it and kind of like starting to mold underneath. Um, and you can kind of faintly detect like lilies at the altar, the incense used in the ceremony. Uh, but this mold, uh, this, uh, the smell of mold is so overwhelming. I think that it destroys the fragrance. So uh, I, I'm just not there yet. I can't appreciate this fragrance at all. Uh, and I feel um, another one that I tried on that I didn't like at the time is kind of herbal incense. It's called Ex Voto from an Austrian house called Wiener Blut. Um, don't like that one at all either. I'm not sure why. It has guayac wood incense. I think some herbal notes. It also has uh, the note of nutmeg, which can be quite of a challenge for me. Uh, I don't love nutmeg and fragrance. It can work sometimes, but in this one, this, this fragrance is not doing it for me. Um, and then I also got to try like all the fragrances from Comme des Garçons that have this incense. I think there are like four different ones from different churches. And I think there was one there that I liked. It was called maybe Zagorsk. I'm not sure, but I haven't, I haven't actually, you know, gone back and tried them again. I can't quite remember them. But I wanted to mention one more or two more that I, that I don't appreciate at all yet. And even though I love the house and it's from Perfumum Roma and it's Olibanum and it's, Let's see, um, Arso. And you'd think by looking at the notes 
that maybe I would like olibanum because it has very, it, I mean, it's combined with, with orange flower, which quite, is a quite easy to like kind of note, but it just, I don't know, these fragrances just come across like odd, like disturbing. Um, I just don't like them yet. Maybe I will, maybe I never will, I don't know. But this is just so exciting to me how my taste continues to, to evolve. Um, all of a sudden I'm kind of, you know, bored. I used to have four bottles from, from this house, Van Cleef and Arpel, and now I have only this one bottle left because the others have like, they're just too boring now. They're too simple, I get them already. Like the amber fragrance, Amper, Amber Imperial is gone because it just had nothing to offer me anymore. It was just too like, Vanillic and powdery and ambery and just like, okay, I know this. This is, now I'm into Amber Leavable from, uh, with, that has incense facets to it. And it just, they're just so more out there to discover. And I don't need to hold on to fragrances that I've kind of grown out of. Um, so my journey continues and I want to bring you on it. So um, yeah, that, those were my thoughts on incense right now.